Hello everyone. Today I'm gonna talk about um, a little bit of Grasshopper and how to use Mantis Shrimp to move uh, data and information out of Grasshopper into Dynamo and then uh, use that information to generate schedules uh, in Revit. Uh, as you know, I can imagine this doesn't sound very, uh, very sophisticated, very exciting, but uh, the interesting part of it is that I'm trying. I'm gonna try to create a schedule of just like random information that's not coming out of uh, out of Revit, so it's not scheduling elements in Revit, uh, which makes this a little bit uh, a little bit tricky and much more interesting, I think, uh, because uh, normally you create schedules uh, out of elements in Revit, uh, and that's pretty simple. That's pretty basic, but trying to schedule something outside of Revit, like importing an Excel schedule or just random data uh, and generating a schedule so that it's consistent with your uh, with your outputs for on the project uh, that that gets a little bit tricky. So I'm gonna use Mantis Shrimp. Mantis Shrimp is a plugin that I've been uh, that I've been developing uh, that allows you to interact between uh, Dynamo, uh, which is a plugin for Revit, and Grasshopper. So what you see here is uh, you know some geometry, uh, a canopy for. Uh, whatever that was, a train station, I think. Um, so I have this geometry generated in, in Grasshopper. Uh, and I'm, what I'm going to do is schedule XYZ coordinates for each one of the panels. So let's really quickly zoom in on one of these panels. So imagine I have all these panels. Uh, and if I, all right, so I have all these panels, and let's say I name each one of these panels as phase 0, phase 1, phase 2, and so on, so on. So each one of these has a unique sort of identifier. So I'm going to use that and combine it with the uh, with data that I'm going to get from right here, from points. So there's going to be four, since, since they're all quads, there's going to be four points per panel. So I'm going to I'm going to try to schedule that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send that information over. So I'm, I'm not going to go through all this stuff, but it's just basically breaking down each panel and generating at the end generating a data tree of information that looks like this. So uh, number one would be phase zero, and it has x, y, z coordinates. So that will be that will be one of those points, and it's basically generating a list of all of these coordinates for each one of the points. So then, you know, as you go through, eventually I'm gonna have four points with phase zero identifier, and these are x, y, and z coordinates for each one of these points. So altogether, if I have 200 panels, each one has four points. I'm gonna have 800 data points, data sets. And that's what you can see here, 799, which is exactly 100 uh, points. So what I'm doing next is I'm using uh, I'm using Mantis Shrimp. This is a Mantis Shrimp export uh, data export uh, component. So I'm setting that and I'm giving it a uh, some random name for a for test. So I'm calling this a schedule test. That geo is going to be a file that's going to get generated. Um, when I run this, so if I was to if I was to come here, you can see that there's a schedule test geo file that gets created uh, from this definition. So when this is sent to, set to true, it exports that data out. Uh, and the only the only thing that I have to pay attention to is that since this is a data tree. Um, I really want to uh, make sure that, that I have at least uh, two fields for the, for the data tree branch uh, just because of how this definition is written to, uh, to manage data trees and then export them in to Dynamo. So that's something that's really important. So then when I'm on, on the Dynamo side, uh, so this is in Revit, uh, I open up Dynamo and then we can start doing a bunch of, bunch of things with it. So first, I can use uh, I can point my file path at that schedule test geo, and I can use the read grasshopper file uh, node to read my data back in. So you can see that I 
I get a list of lists and they match that exact same structure that I had in uh, just move this stuff around um, so here we are so here's my here's my data set uh, in Dynamo and here's my data set that I exported out of Grasshopper so the reason why I'm, I'm pulling them all together like that is because when I create a schedule that's that's exactly how I wanted them ordered so you can see these match one to one phase zero phase zero and all those coordinates and I have my 800, 800 data sets here all arranged in the in a exact same matching structure as this stuff in Grasshopper so so really quickly once we have our data um, I'm gonna go to Revit I just open a random Revit file so and I created a sheet to drop it on later for uh, to visualize this, but I want to go to view and I want to create a schedule, right? And I want to create a schedule of elements that I very rarely use in the projects. I want to use something very vague that you're never going to use in an architectural project. So I usually use something like one of the analytical stuff. So I actually have to go in here and check this on because normally you don't even see those. So that's something that's if you attach a bunch of information to these uh, categories, to these elements, you're never really going to know on an architectural project because you're probably not using analytical nodes. So let's use analytical nodes and the next thing uh, I usually do is actually use a schedule uh, schedule keys. So I use a key schedule to, uh, to generate random stuff because what that does it and these wouldn't be here if I wasn't playing around, so this would be empty, and then all you have to do is just add parameters, right? And you can add whatever parameter, make it a text parameter to this, and if you hit OK, it gives you a blank schedule, right? And then what's what's really cool about the key schedule is that you can just go in and insert data information. So what I use the key schedules for is usually generating uh, like general notes for the project and then you can just go in and you know type away you can create as many fields as you want but it looks like a like a typical Revit schedule right although it's not because it contains just random information that you've generated so I'm gonna create that schedule again make it a key schedule and then I'm not gonna need this parameter, but I'm just gonna add, you know, a bunch of test parameters that I generated, and I generate them exact same way, and they all text parameters, and the key name is kind of default, and it's just the number uh, for ordering, um, and it's actually quite important, so I'll just leave it as it is, and then I add add a bunch of new parameters. So once we have that, it generates kind of blank, uh, random schedule. You can come in here and then just rename it to whatever. Uh, right? Uh, and you notice that whatever you type in here for the view name, it actually comes up in the header section too. So that's our schedule. Right? And doesn't it, it's pretty empty and we can uh, we can start populating with data. So you can see the pattern that uh, right away why I arrange that data in, in this way is because this is exactly how many fields I have here and this is how many fields I have on each sublist so number one is a key name and then I have phase zero for the test parameter one and then I have the X Y and Z X Y and Z's so over here you can actually come in here and just uh, it's actually a key name here and then you can change those to to match the properties that you're going to be writing uh, writing to them, right? So this is our schedule that we're going to be generating. So first things first, you have to do is uh, is I'm using a node from the Archilab. It's called get uh, get all views, right? I'm going to use that to uh, 
and I'm deleting it and pasting it to refresh uh, how this node works. It's, it's just weird dynamo behavior. Um, so if I run this, it queries up all schedules in the project and it shows me that there's two of them. One is the one that I placed on the sheet and one that there is the, uh, the one that I generated. Uh, it's kind of typical Revit behavior. But I really want the one that I generated that doesn't have the uh, square brackets around it. Um, so it's number one. So I'm using the I'm using a code block to grab element one from that list. So that's going to be my view schedule, right? You can take that view schedule and feed it back here. And then I'm going to feed that data in. And what's important is that uh, the parameters that I created here. It's important to generate uh, a list that matches exactly their names and order in which I want to write them here. So once I do that, uh, I think I can hit run and we'll see what happens. Alright, so first thing that it does is it's going to generate all the rows and there's a hundred of them, so that's quite a, quite a few of them. Um, once we have that, it's usually something, I gotta figure this out, but uh, there's some stuff here that just happens to not refresh very well. Um, let's see what happens here now. Um, so it's just gonna go through and uh, and fill in all those parameters so it's going to generate that schedule for us and it usually takes about uh, I don't know maybe 60 seconds of, of the, watching the blue spinning wheel uh, in Revit and you can imagine it's 800 data points and you basically fill in a parameter even when you're in Revit and you're doing this using a user interface every time you type anything into a schedule it usually takes you know a couple of seconds you know, one to second uh, to refresh it. So there's never, it's not a very quick uh, method, I would say, of filling in that schedule. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to uh, Revit people, see if they, if there's a better way of uh, filling this out much quicker. Maybe we can batch, uh, batch together a bunch of those uh, parameters and just group them under one transaction or something. I don't know. I'm gonna see what I can do with that, but for now it's uh, it's good enough, I guess. So let's just wait for this uh, to finish up spinning, and we'll see what happens in our schedule. Whatever it is, it still beats uh, typing all this stuff in by hand. So, so there it is. I'm just gonna stretch those out a little bit. And there we go. So these are our parameters. And then obviously you can do a bunch of stuff like uh, you can do the typical stuff like sorting and grouping by parameter, uh, create a blank line, and then hide the key name or something like that. And you can just start creating a much better looking uh, schedule for yourself with an identifier and then XYZ coordinates for each one of the panels. So this is basically one of your panels and this is another one. And these are XYZs for each one of the points on it. Um, there's another thing that I've been playing around with. It's not yet finished or fully working. Uh, I was working on some graphic styles and overriding uh, what's displayed here. So normally a view name controls what's displayed in the header, but uh, if you actually dig into Revit API, you can change that. So let's say I wanted to change a few settings of how this header looks like. Um, I'm going to disable this, and then I have a separate node for controlling what the schedule style looks like. So I'm gonna I have a few parameters that you can set text 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 style text size, and what it actually says in the header. So I'm just gonna change it to say X Y Z coordinate schedule uh, without changing the actual view name. So you can see I, I filled in with gray and then changed the text here really quickly. Uh, but it doesn't actually change the 
the name of the of the view so this is just an override for the schedule itself just like we overwrote those it doesn't actually change the parameter names they still the same parameters that I call them which is test 1, test 2, test 3 and so on um, but yeah I mean there's a bunch of stuff that you can do with this um, really quickly um, let's do underline Well, this was actually italics, so the underline is the next one up. So I have to work on that. So you can you can control what the stop, what all this stuff looks like, uh, and I'm working through it uh, to make a series of nodes that will control schedules. So yeah, that's it. Uh, this was pretty easy, pretty fast, and we have a schedule of random data. And the reason I'm saying it's random data is because you can, those fields take any kind of data type. Uh, just because when I was creating, creating those parameters here and adding them in, you can you can specify whether it's a text, you know, a volume area, length, number, or whatever. I usually use text, and that allows me to uh, type in anything. So anything from a text or string to a float value and they all look pretty much the same so uh, you can generate general nodes this way or you can generate XYZ coordinates which um, Revit doesn't allow you to schedule uh, in you know any other straightforward way uh, without writing them back to parameters and you know adaptive components or something so this would be uh, a great way to run kind of generic data schedules and you know propping them on a on a on the sheet and that's it voila you have control over graphics and they look exactly the same as any other schedule in a project and no one would be able to tell if they came from Excel or whatever so there we are this is it uh, using Mantis Shrimp to generate schedules in Revit uh, basically hacking a schedule API in Revit to to run schedules from Grasshopper Alright, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned, um, there will be more components and more stuff coming for the schedule uh, API for Dynamo, thanks.